What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Primetime Sports Podcast, hosted by Joey Miller. So tonight is the start of the NFL season. The first game of the preseason is tonight between the Cleveland Browns and the New York Jets. It is taking place in Canton, Ohio. It is actually the Hall of Fame game, which is actually the first game of every single season. The first preseason game takes place in Canton, Ohio for the Hall of Fame game. So tonight, as I said, it'll be the Jets and the Browns. So I'm going to preview that game and then give you guys some players to watch out for in tonight's game. So let's start off with some notes on the game. Neither team is going to play many starters, if any, at all. The starting quarterbacks for both teams, Aaron Rodgers for the Jets, Deshaun Watson for the Browns, neither one will be starting in this game while playing at all. So it'll be backup quarterbacks going at it. Starting for the New York Jets is Zach Wilson, former second overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. He played in three preseason games in his career, where he was 18 of 25 in those three games, with 214 passing yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. So in his career, his preseason stats are pretty good. Even though it isn't just an exhibition game, these guys are still fighting for spots on every one of these rosters, whether it's the Jets, the Browns, the Giants preseason game against Detroit next week. Every player that's playing in these games, they're all fighting for a roster spot and position on the depth chart. So it's a meaningful game for everybody. Zach Wilson obviously will be the backup quarterback to Aaron Rodgers, but that doesn't mean he's not going to want to go out there and show what he can do. Even though he is the backup quarterback and lost his start and job to Rodgers, you never know. If his number is going to get called this season, if Rodgers were to get hurt or miss a game, Wilson would be next up in line. So he obviously wants to put up a good showing tonight in the game. I'm rooting for Zach Wilson to do well. I know the end of last season really was a struggle for him. He had a rough ending to the year. But I think he can flourish as a backup quarterback, learning behind Rodgers. And maybe one day his day will come again. And a lot of people gave up on him, and it was easy to, considering how things folded last season. But I'm rooting for him to turn things around and get back on track. So next guy I want to mention is the other backup quarterback in tonight's game, and that is Chris Streveler, who will be the backup quarterback tonight for Zach Wilson. Streveler will probably end up getting the most snaps in the game at the quarterback position for the Jets. He actually had a really good showing in the preseason last year, playing in three games with five touchdowns, one interception, and 277 passing yards. Did show a pretty good showing against the Giants in the last preseason game last year. He's going to get himself an opportunity tonight to show what he can do yet again and maybe be the third quarterback on this roster. If they carry three guys, he'll probably end up being the third one. So we'll see what he does in tonight's game. Makai Becton, who missed all of last season for the Jets, will be starting at tackle tonight. His return would be huge for the Jets' offensive line. He can find a way to stay healthy. They've tried to build the offensive line through the draft over the last few years. They've been struggling with injuries and also guys just not performing. Mekhi Becton has been hurt a ton. He's a guy that they drafted in the first round of 2020, thinking he was going to be the answer for them on the offensive line for years to come, and he struggled to stay healthy. But hopefully he finds a way to stay healthy this season. It gives Rodgers some time to throw and then opens up the run game as well for Brees Hall, who will be coming back from his injury from last season. So. Beckton will definitely be somebody to watch tonight. Hopefully he progresses and gets himself back on track and is the player that the Jets thought he would be when they drafted him in the first round in 2020. Next up, a guy to watch out for for the Jets here is Will McDonald, their first-round pick from this year's draft, a pass rusher out of Iowa State. He's a very good player, very talented. He was actually one of the favorite players in the draft for Mel Kuyper. Mel Kuyper was very big on him and his athleticism. There were some videos of him right around the draft that went out and were all over the internet of him jumping over cars. That's his athleticism. He can just jump out the gym. So we'll see what he does in tonight's game. He'll be starting and playing, which is obviously something to watch for the Jets. As for the Cleveland Browns and who's starting for them, it'll be Kellen Mond getting the starting nod for tonight's game. He was the third-round pick by the Minnesota Vikings in 2021 out of Texas A&M. Hasn't really played at all in his NFL career, but had a very productive career at A&M. For the Aggies, he had 71 passing touchdowns, 27 interceptions, with 22 touchdowns on the ground, and 1,600 yards on the ground as well. Had a very good career using his mobility and his agility. We'll see what he does in tonight's game. I'm sure he's going to try to run. Same with Dorian Thompson-Robinson, a backup quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. He'll probably get the second most snaps in tonight's game. It'll go Mond and then Thompson-Robinson. DTR is a very agile and electric quarterback. He had a very good season last year at UCLA, 3,100 passing yards with 27 touchdowns to 10 deceptions. Also ran for 645 yards and 12 touchdowns on the ground. He runs about very effectively, uses his speed and his athleticism very well. I think he's going to be a guy to keep your eye on in tonight's game. I think he's going to have a great game, and I think he'll be the best quarterback that plays tonight. I think Zach Wilson will do well, and I think Dorian Thompson-Robinson does well also. As for some other players to watch out for, Jets undrafted wide receiver Jason Brownlee has had an exceptional training camp for the New York Jets. He had a wild one-handed catch that was contested that I saw on Twitter. It was a great catch, and he has been making rounds, though, 
all training camp long. Besides that catch, I mean, he's been making plays every single day. That one was just the big one that he made. But in three years at Southern Mississippi, he had 135 catches for 2,100 receiving yards and 21 touchdowns. So obviously a very productive receiver at the college level. He's six foot three, 195, and uses his size well. He's definitely got to watch out for tonight. As for a guy to watch out for for the Jets, a guy I already mentioned, Zach Wilson, who, as I said, had a rough ending to last season. But I think he could flourish in the Jets system as the backup to Rodgers. Rodgers obviously has had a great and long career. Maybe you could give Zach Wilson some tips to help him out with his decision-making. And I think at the end of the day, you always got to be ready as a backup quarterback. So tonight could be his opportunity to keep the backup role intact and be the backup quarterback for the Jets this season. We'll see what Wilson does. I'm excited to see him play tonight. Even if he doesn't get another starting job in the NFL, he's still probably going to be a backup quarterback for the rest of his career, just considering the arm talent. But if he wants to get that starting quarterback job, obviously it's to show what he can do as a backup quarterback here for the Jets. And maybe in a year or so, when he's a free agent, if the Jets were to trade him or let him go or not re-sign him, maybe he gets an opportunity elsewhere. This is his third year on his rookie deal. He has a fourth year guaranteed. After that fourth year is over, maybe if Rodgers is still there, he ends up going elsewhere and will be a starting quarterback maybe on another team that wants a bridge quarterback that they want to give a shot to to see what they could do. So maybe Wilson gets another shot elsewhere one day. I know, as I said, he did struggle last season, especially with decision-making against the Patriots. He really struggled in those games. But I think Wilson has the arm talent. He just has to be better at the decision-making than obviously be a better leader as well. But we'll see what he does this year as a backup quarterback for the Jets. Another player that I already mentioned that you should watch out for is Dorian Thompson-Robinson, the backup quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. He's an exciting player to watch. I think he could definitely light up tonight's game and put up some big numbers. He can run and can throw as well. He had 12 rushing touchdowns last season on top of 27 passing touchdowns. So coming off a very good year at UCLA, did also play five years in college, I'm pretty sure. So he has some veteran experience. So we'll see what he does in tonight's game. I think he could be one of the best players to watch out for in the game. I mean, he can run, as I said, and also can throw very well too. I mean, even though there's a lot of mobile quarterbacks in college that just love to run the ball, he can run, but he also has a very good arm as well. So I would watch out for him. I think he's going to be very good in the Hall of Fame game tonight. Another play to watch out for is Browns running back Hassan Hall, former running back at Louisville and Georgia Tech. He had 2,500 kick return yards in college, averaging 25 yards a return. Also, two kick return touchdowns. Blazing speed. He's a very shifty back, but didn't really light up any numbers out of the backfield. 1,800 rushing yards in his career in, in the backfield with 12 rushing touchdowns, averaging 4.7 yards per carry. I think he could definitely be a player to watch out for in tonight's game. Another guy, Browns linebacker, Charlie Thomas III, an undrafted free agent linebacker, but very versatile and a good hitter as well. 313 total tackles over five years in college, including 112 tackles this past season with two sacks, two interceptions, two forced fumbles, and two fumble recoveries. He was a money backer last year for Georgia Tech. He did a little bit of everything. Interceptions, forced fumbles, fumble recoveries, sacks, tackle for losses. I mean, he did a little bit of everything this past season for Georgia Tech. So we'll see what he does in tonight's game. He's a guy to watch out for. Another Brown that you should watch out for is Brown's running back, Jerome Ford. Just eight carries to 12 yards last year. But when he does get the chance to move off the depth shot, which will be this season with Kareem Hunt gone, he could definitely perform. In 2021 for Cincinnati, and this is the University of Cincinnati when he was still in college, he had 215 carries for 1,300 yards and 19 touchdowns, averaging 6.1 yards per carry in the 2021 season for the Wildcats. Also had 21 catches in the air with 220 yards receiving and a receiving touchdown that year in 2021. 30 kick returns last year for the Cleveland Browns, averaging 24.1 yards per return. Speedy back will definitely get more touches this season. Another Jets player to watch out for is Marquise Waters, a safety, an undrafted free agent defensive back for the New York Jets. He can play cornerback, box safety, linebacker, can really just do it all. He played six years in college between four years at Duke and two years at Texas Tech. In 2022 for Texas Tech, he had 60 total tackles with 13 tackles for a loss, a sack, and an interception. Very good in run defense, plays aggressive. He's a guy to keep your eye on. And one last play to keep your eye on is Brown safety D'Anthony Bell, former West Florida product in 2021 for West Florida. He had 61 total tackles with two interceptions, including a 90-yard pick six, seven passes defended, and two forced fumbles. He had 14 tackles in 16 games last year for Cleveland with two starts for the Browns. He's a six foot two safety. He plays big, plays hard, hits very well, and he's a very good tackler. I watched some of his college film today, and I was impressed. Became a fan of him right away. He's another guy to keep your eye on in tonight's game. So one last guy I want to mention is Trey Dean III, a defensive back from the University of Florida. He's playing for the New York Jets. 
He'll be playing in tonight's game. He's a guy to keep your eye on. Very long career for the University of Florida. Played actually five seasons for the Gators. Was very active as well. Played in over 10 games in four different seasons. Played nine games in 2020. So he has a lot of experience in the defensive backfield in college where he played very well for the University of Florida. As I said, 255 total tackles over five seasons with 13 and a half tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, four deceptions, and 18 passes defended. He's a big cornerback that was actually undrafted in this past draft in 2023. Six foot three, 210, built like a linebacker. And he plays more defensive back. He can hit pretty hot as well. Maybe he makes the shift to being like a money back or like a Jabril Peppers type where he's playing safety but can come up in the box as well, cover tight ends, maybe even blitz as well from the linebacker spot. We'll see what he does. I think he's a very versatile player that the Jets could definitely use. I think he's a guy to keep your eye on in tonight's game. So we'll see what happens in the game. Uh, now I'm going to give you guys a prediction for what I think is going to happen for a score. I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns winning tonight's game. I'm going to take it to be a close game. I'm going to go Cleveland winning 27-21. I think it's going to be a little bit high scoring than years past in the Canton game. I think if I look at it, I think you have two quarterbacks for Cleveland like to move the ball on the ground. Kellen Mons, Dorian Thompson-Robinson. Chris Drevel even has a little bit of mobility as well for the Jets. He looked very good in the preseason last season. And then Obviously, Zach Wilson as well. So I think there's going to be a little bit more scoring in this game than most people expect. If you look at the history of the Hall of Fame game, there's not really much scoring typically. 2019, Broncos over the Falcons, 14-10. 2021, Steelers over the Cowboys, 16-3. Last year, Raiders over the Jacksonville Jaguars, 27-11. You look at 2018, Ravens won 17-16 over the Bears. 2017, Cowboys won 20-18. 2015, Vikings won over the Steelers, 14-3. 2014, Giants over the Bills, 17-13. 2013, Cowboys over the Dolphins, 24-20. 2012, Saints over the Cardinals, 17-10. And then 2010, the last one to mention, Cowboys over the Bengals, 16-7. There really isn't much scoring in these games, so a 27-21 prediction would be one of the more high-scoring games considering... Only one game that I mentioned, and it's the Hall of Fame game for 2013, featured two teams that scored 20 points in the same game, and that was the Dolphins losing to the Cowboys 24-20. So my prediction is both teams scoring in the 20s. I think it's going to be a little bit more high score than people expect. And as I said, I take Cleveland winning this game 27-21. I think maybe even 27-24. I think it'll be a little bit of a close game, but I leave Cleveland to come out as the winner, even though they're slight underdogs right now. So we'll see what happens in the game. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. As always, I appreciate it and hope you guys have a good one. Thank you.